I want to tell you, I'm, I'm excited about my, my next venture in faith. I'm going, to, hopefully in the next couple of months, be publishing my first children's book. I, I love children and have been writing in rhymes. I'm, I can channel Dr. Seuss and I can rhyme better than him. And I have some great, some great ideas that we're putting in a format that kids will love. But I wrote a book, and it's, it's, not, it's just in rough form, but I, I was thinking about it as Mike was talking, and I'm gonna just tell you the story that's in this book. It's a story that takes place like back in the 50s in kind of a Mayberry RFD town where everybody's a little slow and simple and sweet and whatnot. And this guy comes to town with his girlfriend and her sister or whatnot, and they decide to take the town for a ride. So he's a con artist, and they're trying to get money, build money out of, uh, build people out of their money. So the two sisters rent a house in town on either side of the town, and he acts like he doesn't know them. He comes to town as a salesman, and he's selling a new product called the Secretor. The Secretor. Secretor. It's a secret, but it's a, it's secrete. It's a secretor. The secretor is nothing more than a block of wood. It's a four inch by four inch cube of wood. And he takes old lamp cords and cuts them off of lamps and he puts black tape around both ends so it can't short out. Drills a hole in that block of wood and puts glue on it and glues that thing in there. And he sells this secretor. Well, he goes door to door selling them. Well, he goes first to his girlfriend's house and the sister's house and sells them a secretor after they've got to know their neighbors and whatnot. They plug it into their house and amazing things begin to happen. They start having good dreams. They, their money situations improve. One of them is cured of arthritis. The other one, her love life begins to improve and her, her irregular heartbeat is now regular. They begin to talk it up in their circles and their friends telling them, man, you've got to get one of these secretors. Next thing you know, there's such a high demand for secretors, this guy's hiring people to work in his barn, but he has to swear them to secrecy because then they'll know that it's a, the whole thing's fake to start with. But they're continuing to make the four inch cubes called secretors with lamp cords stuck into a hole with glue and selling them all over town. Well, he's got one in his own living room, of course, and things are going great for him. He's making money like he's never thought, him and his uh, girlfriend and her sister were talking about it one night and he said, can you believe what's happened to us since, since we started this secretor business? And they're laughing about it. And one of the, the girlfriend sisters says, well, you know why you're doing so well with this thing? And he said, why? And she said, because you've got a secretor plugged in. Well, they just laughed about it. And he says, no, I don't believe that's it at all. And I'll show you I don't believe it. So he unplugs his secretor and throws it out the window. Well, the next day, one of his workers tells somebody what's going on. And the plan begins to unfold and everybody begins to find out that it's fake and whatnot. So people begin to throw their secretors away and lo and behold, the girl who had arthritis cured, it came back. The girl with the irregular heartbeat that had been fixed by the secretor, suddenly her heart was beating irregularly again. And the girl that had finally found love and had a love life lost her love life after she unplugged her secretor. So all these people in this town they begin to go out and try to figure out where they threw them away. And they try to get their secretors back. And the ones that can't find them go back to him and beg him to begin making them again. So he starts the factory all over again in his barn and has more help than ever. And they're making secretors left and right. And everybody in town has one. He comes up with a newer model that's a little bit bigger that even does more for you. And they've, the whole town is excited. And, and as the story ends... Um, you see the town of whatever the name is. I haven't named the town yet, but it says home of the secretor. They've all bought into it. And there's the God story. <laughs> that, that, I mean, if the people have plugged this thing in for years and they've, the, the, I mean, now I believe in God. I want to stand up and tell you, I believe in God, but not the same one that we worshiped and talked about. Whole different form, whole different picture, whole different energy form and mass whole different discipline, not a Jewish grandpa in the sky, not that God. But that whole concept of, an, of a God of a certain ethnicity who has a chosen land and his people versus all the other people in the world that he's going to bless first, the very idea that he would send Jesus to the Jews. And then because they rejected him, us dog Gentiles get to partake of it. Well, 
screw that and whatever you know whatever god came up with that you know you know but we bought it we plugged in our secretors and we were all we sang it oh me seeing grace guess what i don't need any damn grace i'm good enough without grace How sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I don't think so. I'm not a wretch. I am marvelous and amazing and beautiful and intelligent. And I don't need God's grace to become all that. Plugging in that secretor convinced me I was a piece of crap and that I needed something other than me, outside of me, beyond me, and really beyond my own reach to become something in order to meet the criteria of someone I had never seen and didn't really know if they existed or not. Moses is walking around one day and he looks at the sky and sees the stars and he, you know, look, he didn't get to look through the Hubble telescope, but he saw what stars he could. And his wife said, Moses, get in the house. He went in the house and she's, he says, what were you doing out there? And he says, I was just looking at the stars. She said, where do you reckon they came from? And he said, oh, hell, I don't know. In the beginning, uh, a God created the heavens and the earth. And it was without form and void. And uh, his spirit was probably brooding over darkness. And he, where did light come from, Moses? I don't know. Probably God said, let there be light. And there was. She said, write that down. (laughs) 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 Write that down. Moses' wife is the one that had the suggestion for Genesis. She says, we wouldn't even have Genesis if she hadn't said that. So he wrote that down. So you're, you know, you th- it's not the word of God, it's the word of Moses' wife. You know, well, it's Moses' word, but it's her idea. Is why you even have a Bible that says God did all that stuff. It should have been a clue in Moses' writings when he began to tell about the death of Moses. How did he write about the death of Moses if, if, if he was writing it? He wrote Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy, darlings. So, and in it is recorded his own death. So, so you know, he obviously made some of it up, okay? And, um, and we bought it as, the, as a secretor. We had that thing plugged in, and man... The Pentateuch secretor. What? The Pentateuch secretor. Absolutely. And it, the Pentateuch secretor, it made us feel better about ourselves, but at the same time, it made us dependent on something that wasn't even real. At the same time, yeah, we had, we had you know... If our power went off or if the thing got unplugged, we'd slap one of our children down because they unplugged the secretor and it wasn't even real. The, my mama was not very violent with me. She hit me three or four times in my life, but the slap I remember the hardest was when I took the Lord's name in vain because I had, I, I had offended her secretor. I had unplugged her secretor and somehow the blessings that we were counting on to make the ends meet at the end of the month may not come if somebody in the house said, God damn. I mean, we, you know, we, you can't say that because you don't want to piss this guy off. He could send a flood or a plague or, you know, kill all the firstborn or the, you, know, you just, this is not somebody you want to mess with. Don't touch the secretor. Don't keep it plugged in just to be safe. You know, we've got, we've got that secretor going. That's, the, that's what your God is. It's a block of wood with a lamp cord glued into it. And it makes you nervous to unplug it, don't it? And as you're, as you're hearing this kind of message, and you're, you're looking at folks and saying, well, my, you know, well, they, they unplugged their secretor and they seem to be all right. And, you look a little closer and say, well, I don't, I don't know. looks like he's gained weight since he unplugged his secretion. <laughs> and didn't his church close down? <laughs> right? And his mama's got cancer. I don't know if I'd unplug that secretor or not. <laughs> and the fact of business is, the church would have closed anyway. It was about money, not God. And, and mama got cancer and, and because she smoked 50 years. It wasn't... It wasn't somebody in the sky giving mama cancer because we unplugged him. So there's my story and I'm sticking to it. And I will, I, I just want to encourage y'all that if you unplug your secretors, you'll be okay. And if, you, if you're not, you wouldn't have been anyway. It had nothing to do with that block of wood that you're unplugging. All right? Y'all got that? That book, the book of the secretor will be available soon. Maybe you'll buy it for your grandkids and deliver them from religion. It'd be a wonderful thing. I'm so honored to be here with y'all this week. I love every one of you. Y'all are family. 
And um, we're all family on the whole earth, so don't feel special. You're just like all everybody else. <laughs> I feel the same about y'all as I do Hitler and Donald Trump, which are, which are very close to the same person, it appears. But, <laughs> but, but they're me. And they're you, and I'm you, and we're all one. And I'm, I'm thankful for that and for these good times we're having. So I'm going to let Bruce come up and close us in a song. And you, you just remember the secretor. And if you've got your secretor plugged up securely and somebody unplugs it, just leave it unplugged for a minute and see what happens. And I think you'll be all right. And as we redefine God and represent God, um, it's not that we're throwing God out in the trash. We're just redefining who and what and where and when God is. And if yours is the one of, that Moses and his wife came up with, you probably should change. I'm just saying. <laughs> Bruce, come on up. Um, and I'm gonna, I'll, I'll preach a little longer in the morning, but I want y'all to get y'all's naps in because y'all look bad. Y'all need some beauty rest before we... <laughs> some of y'all need to spend an hour sleeping, an hour putting on makeup. We're going out to town tonight to a nice restaurant. <laughs> so y'all dress up. We're not wearing jogging pants to the boiler room. Y'all put some... So we'll meet back in here at 545. I love y'all very much. Bruce is going to close us with a song. Oh, you're welcome. You're welcome. Oh, yeah.